I mean, there's no better work than a network. And, and, and that is what happens behind the scenes. And everybody is behind the scenes approaching one another. Yeah, yeah. they're not going on Twitter. Yo, bro, hey, you want to try this new overlapse thing, dude? It's going to be <laughs> so fucking rad. I mean, it's, that's just that's just not happening. But but that is our mindset, right? That is where that is our world. That is where we live. We need to shield this. We need to shield this token. Because if we don't shield it, that other retail not buying. Ladies and gentlemen, comrades, welcome to episode 19 of the Quanfi Show. Uh, we have a little bit of a different schedule than we anticipated today. Um, I guess I had to postpone um, for reasons. And um, hence we're doing our regular programming. So what we have today is Quant was at an event. And um, they spoke on stage with a bunch of what some people in the crypto world would call banksters. Um not really news, just some uh, some interesting tweets that we'll go through. Um, ECB last week, we already um, spoke about this on the Dutch show, um, made announcements about the digital euro. We're going to have a look at what the quant um, expected quant participation will be. Also, quant smart lock is now a fact. So um, they have authorized and audit and now they have smart lock added to their suite of, of products within the overledger platform it's going to be pretty interesting um and also and we're going to start with this there was a video a video got uploaded yesterday where they went in depth on on project rosalind and to a lot of you this might seem like ancient news and it is in a way um, second phase of Project Rosalind was concluded a couple of months back. Tom Martin spilled the beans on stage, so expectations were also high for the stage today that somebody might um, run their mouth. Fortunately, as far as I know, that did not happen. Um, but shortly after, we had the Project Rosalind video, and well, that obviously um, showed us what we all hoped and suspected. Looking to share my screen here. Let me put it on the right screen. Um, and uh, quantum tweet, so I'm going to use this. And Zoom just threw me out again for no apparent reason, which is interesting. So let's go back to the screen share and see how that goes. Would you like to start over again or no we'll just keep it fuck it i need to go fix my zoom uh, let's see this was window shift arrow now tim is on the left again which is great that's a nice little trick if you use shift windows and then the arrow keys if you have multiple screens you can switch your active screen to the left or to the right um which is really cool um okay sharing the screen Right here, right. So, yeah. um, want to be boiled down. Um, the active participants of Project Rosalind. Let me get Tim in frame again. So, somebody to talk to when I look to the left. Um, and as you can see here, we have Barclays, Mastercard, the Bank of Canada, Amazon, BNY Mellon, and Revolut. And um, you can also see them right here. Let's sure if this is a screenshot or uh, of, of the video, or or just from a, a website. I noticed that there's a apologies, a case study floating around somewhere. Um, but Project Rosalind was big, as you guys know. Um, Quant provided just about everything with UST as well, and um, blanking. Oh yeah, the video. Yeah, right. Tim, there was a video they uploaded yesterday. It was yes, there, there was um, three seconds, I think. What? I, I believe the video was four minutes thirty three seconds. Yeah, something like that. I think it was four and a half minutes. Yeah. Uh, once again, about um, Project Rosalind. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Well, I don't really I would remember. Say... I don't really remember many specific things. So, uh, Quan did what one usually does. They uh, they they post something on YouTube, uh, completely out of the blue. Uh, the video is up, stays up for around a couple of hours. Then they delete it. Uh, then they post something on Twitter, and then they delete the twi- tweets, and then it's gone, and they don't communicate about it anymore. And, and we both think that uh, one of their interns is now, well... Hewitt's uh, new carpet. Y- yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> at least missing. Um <laughs> But yeah, I mean, they, they posted this video. Uh, it was kind of interesting. People asked me about it. What was in it? Um, yeah, not really surprising stuff. Yeah. However, they did confirm their partnerships once again. And they basically said that, hey, uh, Project Rosalind um, already showed us what we can do. And... Um, the test is now actually being implemented in real products. And yeah, yeah, they spoke, what they spoke about the phase three is coming. Uh, so phase two is concluded. And they, they went into a little bit more depth as to the um, what the participants did, right? So each one of these companies that I just named, right? So the Barclays, MasterCard, Canada, etc. They, they all created a specific product and it was indeed a working product. And um, which could actually be used or is actually used. I'm not really sure about that in real life. So the video went a little bit more in depth on on, on those things. Um, so expecting it to come up eh, anytime soon. I mean, the, the other video, the product wasn't a video that they <laughs> uploaded, then took down again and so on. That took about a week and then they uploaded it again. And so we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, there there was probably an over uh, overzealous is the word uh, <laughs> intern that um, just uploaded everything. I mean, you you'd think they have procedures by now um, to prevent this type of thing from happening. Um, but but they I don't. Mean, they clearly or, don't. Um, or or they just do it for us, right? Because they they know we're like hawks and 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 we watch everything they do. Um, and, and and maybe it's just for our loyal fans. I yeah, would not. Honestly, I, I I don't I don't buy that honestly. <laughs> I wouldn't pass the pass Gilbert, but uh, I I, re- I really don't. I think there's better than like, mess up so many times. I honestly believe that that social media is is difficult for most companies and even for us, right? I mean, um, it's just difficult getting your marketing perfect. Uh, everything happens with a click of a button. It's different than yeah. running uh, organized ad campaigns. Um, we had our fair in... share of mistakes as well. Yeah, yeah, and they, they happen, but there there's more control, and you really want to check what you're doing, and here you can mess up in the click of a button, because you can also remove it within a click of a button. So yeah. kind of understand. <laughs> hey, what this, this you, quantity do, do tweet, see, where do you want to go? Uh, do, do you uh, see a JP Morgan thing on the screen? Uh, I see a quantum tweet about Barclays, MasterCard, Bank of Canada, Amazon, okay. B9 let, Mellon. Let, let, let me put up another screen. Then. Okay, fair enough. Ah, and now Zoom got it right. So now you see a guy with, with glasses, right? Yeah. Is that JP Morgan? Mm-hmm. Wonderful, yeah. So... Uh, can you, can you in... zoom in a bit, perhaps? Or is that impossible? If it's impossible, then we should... Yeah, I mean, it, it is now as big as my screen. You should be yep. able to see this. All right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, Nick in the Council of Quant. Um, this this is uh, posted by Jean-Yves Roche Decter of the CFA CEO of Grit Capital with 1.2 million followers. And she posted just in JP Morgan's quote unquote JPM coin now processes $1 billion daily. The first major digital token backed by a U.S. bank. It lets also clients transact in dollars and euros via private blockchain. Uh, "Quote unquote retail version is in the works, aiming to gain more market share of J.P. Morgan's 10 trillion daily transactions." Get ready. So, um, J.P. Morgan news. Um, why here? Well. 
there is more and more confirmation that from Council and Council, go follow. Yeah, go check that out. It's on Telegram. Links are in the description. Oh, and leave a comment while you're down there. Uh, maybe you like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Share with your friends. You'll help us a lot. And um, more, more and more signs, right? I mean, we, we all read the tea leaves. That's why most of us are here. That's why most of us are really fucking early. And that's why the waiting is so hard for a lot of people. Um, but yeah, JP Morgan appears more and more to be a sure thing. Um, nothing is a sure thing until it's a sure thing. There are even still now people uh, doubting the Bank of England, even though the logo is on the fucking website. But here we are. Um, so yeah, JP Morgan, JPM coin is interesting. One of the first, and it is now also has also been tied to the Monetary Authority of Singapore, MAS, and uh, HKMA, I believe, Hong Kong Monetary Authority. Mm -hmm. And it all keeps getting more and more clear that um, there's a good chance that quant is serving them all. It's just a little bit hard um, to present the evidence here. Um, because it, it requires a, a vast amount of, well, insider knowledge. And to be honest, we don't have it. And I will have the utmost trouble conveying to you guys what it actually means and how it all ties in as well. It, it would take like old school quant for show episodes, right? So we're going to be needing two to three hours. Um, maybe we're getting a Hungarian on the show someday soon. And uh, yeah. he likes to, uh, to milk those things out but well, with a lot more eloquence than we can provide. Is this kind of a retail CBDC then? Like, uh, or, it's not a CBC. It's a GPM coin. A GPM it's not a, coin. No, it's not a CBC because that would be implied as a central bank digital currency. But it's a yeah. digital currency oh, yeah, run that by was a private thing. bank. Quant tweeted about JPM coin a couple of times. And and we're also going to into the, the, the ECB thing because Quant has lately been posting stuff um, from the ECB on the digital euro. They have not done that previously. Um now they're posting it on their LinkedIn and their main X account. And they did the same with JPM. And both Gilbert, Quant tweeted, retweeted, as well as Andrew, um, which is not a confirmation officially of anything, obviously, but it rhymes really, really well with things that happened in the past. And Quant is not known for just simply holistically sharing and liking shit especially not on their linkedin um so it it underpins the maybe the factuality of our speculation a little bit more um think of it what you will um and um well place your bets accordingly not financial advice doesn't work but i still say it <laughs> which is uh, cool and i interrupted you team i steamrolled you actually what were you yeah, on about okay. No, as in, like, how do you, how would you call this? Um, because, well, I know about JPM coin, and we know that oh, like, right. banks yeah. are going to issue their own yeah. coins, yeah. and you will have multiple versions of currencies, <laughs> eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that uh, was the tweet that Andrew sent. Andrew sent the tweet that um, some banks are waiting for CBDCs, and some are just tokenizing their own assets, right? And JP yeah. Morgan, yeah. Chase is a really, really fucking big bank. They have deep pockets. So they created their own, um, their own stable coin, if you will. And yeah, it's a stable coin. It's a bank run stable coin. Whoa, yes. I'm really yes. out of the loop yes. with yes. all these. Yes. <laughs> yeah. After yeah. the stable coin and shenanigans of last year, I kind of fell out of love with them. Yeah, but it, it is truly the future, right? We're take we're, we're talking about a tokenization of stuff. And if yeah, in the past we spoke about Galileo, they looked to tokenize real world assets, right? Phones, watches, jewelry, etc. Um, but the low hanging fruit, right? The easy hacks, also for saving a fuck ton of money, is if you have a big organization like JPM and you can have all your payments on the back end. This is important on the back end, um, having getting settled with your own coin. It's kind of what Facebook wanted, right? With with DM and Libra. Um if, if 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 you can have a currency to settle debt with and to pay with, um, 
within your own family or your group of friends, if you will, um, it, it, it really just decouples you from the financial system and all the intermediaries that are there right now. And that's one of the biggest problems that we have with money is that it is really goddamn expensive to get money from A to B. Uh, because if you go and, and, and wire money, that's from money from A to B, and, and, and that's bank in country A and bank in country B, then you need to go through the rest of the alphabet before you can actually get to B. It's like going backwards. It takes hours, days, and more. And in the meantime, your money is someone, is someone else's account. And that other person is actually making money off of your money, probably, whilst you're not. And money that's stagnant, no money velocity, costs you money, right? Because you cannot invest, etc. So if yeah. shit's not settled, it just costs. And if you have for your internal structure, for instance, let's say the, the Googles and the Facebooks and the JP Morgans of this world, if if, if you have um, either subsidiaries or or, or separate um, businesses or, or offices, that's what I was looking for all around the world, and you need to transfer money from one to another, um, that, 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 that could pose a problem. And if you have your own little stable coin, um, that could simplify things a lot, I think. And you need to get partners on board and such as well, obviously. Um, so that that's a wholesale thing. It's on the back end, and that's the easy part, right? That's also what they spoke about with Martin Rosalind, which was focused on retail, is that um, the, the wholesale part is easy. The challenges arise when you get to the retail side of things, and you need to um, work with silos, right? Because everything is siloed, even the internet. Somebody tweeted an example of this, I don't know. Because we think that the internet is all oh, this nice, interoperable, holistic thing, um, but it's not. And it is not one internet. It's, it's, it's millions of different servers all running different uh, backends, frontends, et cetera. And it's all patched, right? It's, 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 it's like the electricity in my new house. I mean, I find speaker wire rather than, than, than electrical cable in some spots. It's crazy. Color coding is all off. I mean, it all works, but it really doesn't. Because I have to use the main shutoff switch if I want to change the light bulb. Otherwise, I'm going to probably die. I've been electrocuted twice already because I thought it was in a specific group and it was not. So they just looped it from somewhere else in the house. Um, so that's kind of what the internet is like as well. You, you think you have it all nailed down and eh, you got fished again. Um, but yeah, I digress. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. So getting money from A to B is... yeah difficult that's just yes yes it's not it's, it's never from a to b right now uh, no, <laughs> which is crazy um, especially if it's internal right even if it's with a with a subsidiary so uh, i mean it's hard for me to give examples because i don't have this this, this 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 basic knowledge but but google has a lot of sub companies mm -hmm. um holdings and and if, if you want to transfer money between those and those are in different countries it might still be the same company which is not the same company that's in a different country you have to go through all these legal things. Whilst if and you, you have, have to go through all the jurisdictions. Yes. Yeah. But if you have your internal network, you have your own coin, um, you can throw that on your private blockchain and they can receive the money in their cash it for, for dollars and then spend. That saves you a ton of trouble. Um, so um, that about that. Shall we move on to the latest that we know of update yeah today is tuesday by the way it is tuesday the 31st happy halloween trick or treat <laughs> um i i thought of dressing up but i didn't because well programming was different otherwise i would have been here with a with a crazy hat maybe a crazy look in my eyes you, um, you could still do that I, I i could still but i have not prepared so uh, i was i, I, I was okay all out yeah, uh, I was smeared in, in, in like fake blood this weekend at a Halloween party. Nice. Um, and then I fell asleep. I always use real blood. I just take the, the, the cats walking around in the neighborhood generally. Oh, yeah. yeah actually, but, okay, but I fell asleep and then it was like all my bad sheets. Oh, yeah. yeah. Imagine going, going to sleep with fake blood all over you, like drunk as a fucking skunk. And then wake up in the morning hungover, looking in the mirror, being all covered in blood and shit. <laughs> That'd be a proper heart attack. Yeah, that's what happened with me 
<laughs> Although I, I did remember yeah. what happened the night before, uh, but my par- I, I scared the nice. shit out of other people. Okay. Uh, don't drink, children. Don't use drugs. No. It's bad for you, okay? Too regularly. Just don't okay. Uh, um, update. Financial advice. Yeah. So, um, what, why am I? I oh, yeah, right. There we go. Share the screen. There we are. So, from Quant Developers, this was posted on uh, last week. October 24th, and it reads, Quant Smart Lock adds programmability to everyday payments. Read more at quant.network slash use cases. Hashtag blockchain payments, etc. And if we then go there, we prepare this all for your convenience. There you can see programmable payments and smart locks for everyday purchases by Claire Facer. Claire Facer, you can now see in the bottom right. Um, with the potential for central bank digital currencies to have additional functionality like programmable payments, this use case explores how a person might purchase goods from a retailer, counting on the added safety of smart locks. Going a little bit further, smart third-party locks are an example of programmable payments that condition digital currency spending until specific parameters are met. So, um, these locks enable the user's payment in their interface provider, another PIP, or a trusted third party to determine when the funds can be unlocked and either returned to the user or paid out to a designated recipient. Smart locks have a time limit, and once the expiry date has passed, the locked funds become available for the user to spend again. So the programmable function allows all parties to agree to the payment terms at the point of purchase giving greater control to the customer whilst still assuring the retailer of payment. Some of the typical steps in which the customer would be involved. One, all parties agree to the terms of the transaction at checkout. Two, funds are then locked while still held in customer's bank account with instructions for the retailer to be paid upon successful delivery of goods. And then three, once the delivery or the commitment is confirmed via an API call, the locks are then released and the funds are sent directly and instantly to the retailer. Um, And if this sounds familiar, and Tim said it well last week, uh, isn't this like a smart contract? Yeah. Um, And yes, it is to a degree. Um, But the difference is you keep your money in your pocket. And with a smart contract, and that's the problem with DeFi right now, is you put the money at a third party. So I uh, and Tim, we transact or we intend to transact, we agree. And then Liana um, is getting um, my money and let's say Tim's digital asset. And as soon as she uh, received both, then she will give us our fair share. But in the meantime, We are trusting Liana with our assets. And that is fine up to a point because those pools can get really big and those contracts are not always very well constructed. So Quant already fixed one of those things. They now have audited smart contracts. They have authorized. So if if somebody is needed on Liana's end um, and and they need keys and, and, and whatever, they cannot lose it anymore. And now we also have the smart lock thing, which is kind of like the smart contract, but a little bit different because what it does is it removes Leon from the equation. I have my bank account. I have money in there. Tim has my digital asset. And we agree to transact. We go through um, the API. And as soon as we both agree, the amount of money, let's say 100 euros on my end, gets frozen in my bank account. It does not leave my bank account. And Tim promises me that he will deliver or have my stuff delivered within 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Tim starts um, his transfer. And after the time has passed, my money goes to him, right? So you can use block times for this because they are quote unquote reliable. In the future, you could see other possibilities with with, with actual goods. When I order something at Amazon 
or at, a, at another store. Um, and then the third party uh, to validate delivery could be the delivery man, right? Right now that it's already happening. So I order uh, a new phone. I order a new phone, my phone is broken. And I, I buy that from Tim. The phone costs 700 euros. 700 euros gets uh, reserved on my bank account. Tim ships my phone. The phone goes to the transportation service, parcel delivery, whatever you want to call it. And as soon as he delivers it here, and I sign for that very package, either with my signature or with a QR code scan while I'm logged in, we had a discussion about this in uh, the confidence, which is really interesting. Um, that means that all parties are now in agreement, right? I'm what do you agreement. mean with the QR code scan? Because so that you mean that the package uh, okay. contains a QR code? Yeah, yeah, or an NFC. Yeah, we, yeah that that is actually really smart because always with these kind of arrangements, arrangements, I'm like, well, this is very sensitive for fraud. You could yeah. simply just claim that your package hasn't been delivered. And yeah, but what happens what do you do? is is the delivery guy comes here. And the delivery guy knocks on my door. If the guy knocks on my door and I open the door myself, I can then log in to my customer account for Amazon or whatever, or PostNL or, or UPS or FedEx. Mm -hmm. And I, I log into my account. So then I'm logged in. If I then scan the package and th that I received it, then it gets confirmed on my phone. And in that case, you can trust the driver and you can trust me and, and you get your money. If the driver decides not to deliver my package, he can say, I delivered the package, but I never scanned it. So th th then it's not the, 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 the six eyes, right? Or the, or the four eyes, whatever you want to call it. So there's a lot of potential to implement this across a lot of places. And all the time that the package doesn't get delivered, right? Say the case, we, we have a dishonest delivery guy and, and, and he never delivers my phone. But he sent to you that he delivered the phone. But I never scanned it. Money is still in my account. Then you have the logistic chain where you can actually verify and check, okay, what happened? If you have a, a geolocator and you can see if it is in the van, if the van has a Wi-Fi or whatever. Okay, did it go into the van? Yes, it went to the van. Did it get out of the van? Um, no, it did not get out, out of the van until X, Y, Z. Okay, that was not your address. Okay, something went wrong there. Um, and in the meantime, I still have my money, right? Yeah. So I do not I do not have to worry about getting my money back or whatnot. Imagine the, the, the guy brings the parcel. I've had parcels last. Obviously, I moved. So I had a ton of parcels. And most of the boxes were, were dented and, 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 and probably fell a couple of times because those guys just chug everything in the back of the van. If I decide not to accept the parcel and have it returned, I still have my money and I can buy a new phone the same day because I just declined the package. Cancel my order, especially with Amazon. It's really easy. Not advertising for Amazon, but Amazon, 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 Amazon. <laughs> that's, that, that's the new Tesla, Tim. Now you know. Um, but then you have your money back and you can get a new phone that same day still, right? If, if you want to. Just, just some examples. So um, in this case, it relies on time. But you can have a third party, which could be a delivery service um, or maybe at the post office here, right? They also have um, all these, these secrecy things, reliability things, whatever. Mm. Um, sometimes struggle with the exit. But then wording. getting it back to Overledger and Overledger platform, and maybe I'm just stupid or ignorant or whatever, or, or yeah. I just don't really care. Um, and I had the same feelings last week. Like, what is it? I mean, like, it's a nice extra function that they added. Yeah. But I just don't really see the point. But that's probably okay. me just being stupid. No. Or okay. just not so really. Let, let, Sometimes let there ask... are these problems where you don't realize there's a problem, okay. right? Let, let, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Let's say we will be creating a Quamf Show commemorative. Um, NFT or, or something like that. Mm. Maybe a quantum show blockchain, God knows what. Yeah. Who would you ask 
to create your smart contract. Would you would you ask your neighbor? Would you ask some some random coder that approached you on Telegram, like, "Hey, dude, I can uh, I can make you a smart contract. I'm a full uh, full stack developer, bro." <laughs> Or, or, or would you go to a company like Quant and take an overledger license? Because yeah, it, is okay, only, so... it, it is only 11,000, right, for the base package. And if you get the full suite, so you get okay, like so a smart you're... audit and authorized, et cetera. Okay, so you're, so you're basically saying that this is like a smart contract functionality, but yeah. More hands on plug and play, yeah. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Now I understand. Yeah, yeah. okay. Then I didn't I, look at, yeah, I am not that tech I, savvy, I just don't no. really know on the technical side what I'm talking about. It's okay. I, I think what, what they are doing with that makes sense. the platform is, is that they want to create a one stop shop, and, and not everybody wants a smart contract, some people just want something a little bit, um, l maybe less complicated, maybe. Not necessarily blockchain, right? Because this this sounds like a smart contract, but not for for blockchain. I, I don't know. Um, that could be, but it, it seems to me like they're doing what Google is doing, right? They they, they first had documents, spreadsheets, uh, PowerPoint, and or presentations. I'm sorry, um, and 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 reader or something. And now they have a ton of other stuff that that they added, and most people don't need it, right? If if, if you're not using uh, Google for work or for for school per se, um, you you don't need most of the functionalities. But when you start a business and you want to make a presentation or you want to do something, everything is there and they're really fucking cheap. It is just a one stop shop for for just about everything you 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 can ever need. And I think Quan wants to do the same because they have a very diverse. Um, group of clients and if you ask me one by one they are eliminating they're, every two weeks we get a new feature like this by the way for the last six weeks I, I, I think they're just knocking down one by one all the pitfalls and all the, the, the quote unquote dangerous things that we have right now in DeFi right? yeah. smart contracts the keys um, the in this case uh, smart lock. Authorized. Yeah, authorized. That, that's the one with the keys, right? And, and then they had the smart contracts themselves. Um, th then they had the tokenization and the token creation uh, stuff from tokenized. So one by one, they're taking away all these hurdles um, for, for big businesses, right? Like like JPM. Um, yeah. F for them, th this would work well, right? If, yeah. And if, if you have a client, so basically, um, they're they are applying all the functionalities of what we can do with blockchain, yeah. just bringing them to one platform, and then it's plug and play. Yeah. So, hey, okay. So you have this function on which chain would you like to implement it, and it's a plug and it's go. Yeah, it's pick like and choose, plug and on, play. That. Yeah. So on, on what platform? On what blockchain would you like to build it? Yes. So, and then we go from there. Yeah. 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 That's okay. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. And especially, kind of, oh, especially oh. for the banks, right? The banks and the big companies. Um, if 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 you truly really want to make it uh, trusted, simple, and future proof, as they state, you, you need to make you need to chop all these things up. You you cannot yeah. ju just say like, yes, Solana, you can do everything with us. Good luck. Yeah, yeah, I, like, I, yeah. I, we don't have coders. Yeah, we don't know this. We can't trust that. And they're taking away all the all the butts. Yeah, uh, I. I the thing is, like, sorry for me, all the random noises. It's just the end of the day here. <laughs> We're both cooked. Um, but like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And so now we just go back to the essence of everything, right? That's what it's all about. It's about like building yes. your own stuff on whatever network you want to do. And there's been so much noise uh, in the past years, really, where we kind of we, we focus on everything except the essence of what Overledger is. And um, it's really difficult sometimes to see the bigger picture again, or at least the, 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 the thing where it's all about, uh, because we can very easily get lost 
in discussions about price or about other crypto products which claim to do the same thing or effectively My do the same so thing. My is so much and... better than yours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or uh, companies which offer similar services but focus on some kind of other aspect which isn't necessarily threats. It's just like, well, it's competition, but it's just another company doing other stuff. Yeah, this makes a lot of sense. Um, no, very good to realize sometimes what we're actually investing in. Because yeah, I feel like and, most and... people have lost this part. It's just about like, uh, uh, Qantas is CBDC coin, and that's how we were going to make money. Uh, while there yeah. is so much more to it. Yeah, um, and in, in the same vein, right? Because everybody's like, Mer token not needed. And uh, yeah, but the token if, is if, needed. <laughs> if, if, if you look 10 episodes, uh, five episodes back, Everybody was like, yeah, no, Quant's going to pivot. They're going to consulting right now. And, and what you actually see is that the exact opposite is true, right? Because a lot of people just lack the imagination of the potential of, of something like Overledger Platform, right? If you, if you look at it as, like I said, the, the, the Google uh, product suite, right? Or, or Office yeah. or, or, or whatnot. They just keep adding functionalities and they're building up this WordPress, same example. They're just building up such a powerful um, rack of all these these features, and you don't need everything. And not everything is interesting to everybody, obviously. But but bit by bit, they're building it out. And over at your platform, needs to Q and T token, so value will be uh, is created there, right? And that value that remains in the network because they can literally one-stop shop and for everybody, there's something that they can use and that, and that they want. And there's different skills of uh, uh, subscriptions, right? I mean, you, you, you can go as crazy as you like, uh, but the minimum price is 11K. And that's pounds, um, not dollars. And if you go for that 11K thing, you have basics, right? You can have a, a, a web shop on on the blockchain and you can have your own coin and you can have your, your NFTs and you can have smart contracts or whatever you want. Um, but if you want more, you pay more and, and everything requires the Q&T token um, to work, to operate. And, and I, I, I think that's, I think that's really great. And, and if you look at companies like JPM and you can have them like Lego, built right whatever they need and, and they don't need like all these expensive blockchain devs that actually know fuck all about what's going on like the vast majority um but you can have quant already have everything ready and it is more or less plug and play um i'd say that's uh that's a win for uh for everybody and in the end also for us we just need to be patient and um that is super hard and annoying um, anything to add on this topic, uh, Tim? Not necessarily. I think uh, we just need to realize that the Project Rosalind project or experiment um, just resulted in products that are actually in the test. Well, yeah, resulted literally in products which are now being implemented. Yes, and that yeah. is what we're seeing in the update policy of of Wall well, of Quant. Um, and it's kind of interesting. We had this discussion last week as well because um, uh, a couple of months back, uh, we used to have these updates every now every uh, what was it fortnightly? So every two weeks, yeah, roughly by um, <laughs> by estimate. Uh, and those were usually technical software updates. And now it's more yep. like, hey, yeah, we just literally implemented a new product and we just uh, put it yep. on the platform because they are building a platform once again. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah, I'm not sure how that exactly works. but Yeah, I'm, I'm, curious, sure. if, I'm curious to see if uh, next week. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's Tuesday. Um, if, if we have another additional product. I mean, yeah. And and and, yeah. and that is really cool, right? Because what they did with Project Rosalind, and um, they used Overledger, and some things might be proprietary, but my thinking, just my opinion, looking at all the features that are now being released as 
Overledger platform feel like they have been battle tested in Project Rosalind. And looking at that and looking at all the other speculation and projects that we know are actually going on, yeah, just saying lag chain and uh, most likely the digital euro, we're getting that in a bit. Um, they can all benefit from these features, right? It is not just for the Bank of England, this, right? Because it is, the tech is, is, is owned by Quant, I think, I feel, because they really similar features, like I said, uh, to the public now that were arguably used in Project Rosalind. Um, so if these things get confirmed there, then they can also be implemented because it is over Ledger platform once again, on all the other axes that they are providing services to. So it is not just Project Rosalind, in my opinion. This will also be usable with Lagchain. And this will also be usable um, with, with, with JPM coin, if that um, appears to be uh, true. Um, and so on, right? Uh, Moby and God knows what else. So it it the, the knife cuts multiple ways and, and a lot deeper and wider than than we think. All yeah. in my opinion, obviously. Um talking ECB, right. So this was a quant post, um, October 20th, and it reads the following President of the ECB, Lagarde, quote, we envisage a digital euro as a digital form of cash that can be used for all digital payments, free of charge, and that meets the highest privacy standards. It would coexist alongside physical cash, which will always be available, leaving no one behind, end quote. Congratulations to the Governing Council of the European Central Bank, which announced yesterday it was progressing the digital euro to a two-year preparation phase starting November 1st. So that's yesterday for you guys. Learn more about our experience of working on CBDCs. Um, and then they have this Ledger Insights article posted. And this to me was interesting because generally Quant does not just randomly retweet, let alone write an entire passage about a random project. And, and Tim said very astutely, this does not mean the digital euro is a fact, and that is correct. Um, but I still find it interesting. Looking at this article from on uh, ledgerinsights.com, link in the description. European Central Bank moves digital euro to preparation phase, October 18th, 2023, by Ledger Insights. Um, so today, the Governing Council of the European Central Bank, the ECB, announced it was progressing the digital euro to a two-year preparation phase starting November 1st. The central bank emphasized that this is not a decision to launch the central bank digital currency. After the two-year phase, the central bank could extend the period. The decision to launch will also rest with the ECB governing council, which is very likely to vote to proceed. However, it's provided supporting legislation is passed following the recently published EU first draft. It remains to be seen how straightforward that will be. Initial parliamentary debates indicated the mixture of stances with vocal opposition from some Eastern European states and right of center political parties. Key steps include finalizing a participant rule book, choosing suppliers, etc. This is a quote. We need to prepare our currency for the future. We envisage this euro. That's the one that I read earlier. Um, and a key point mentioned in the announcement was privacy digital euro. Design aims to ensure that central banks won't be able to see the personal data of users. Does mention this is subject to any money laundering compliance. It promises that an offline CBDC will achieve a quote cash like level of privacy, end quote. Um, so Quant um quoted this in their congratulations and then proceeded to also share this on their LinkedIn, as well as the Hong Kong Monetary Authority, I see now. Let's get to that in a bit. Um, here, this is the, the JPM. CBDCs are coming, but forward-thinking banks aren't waiting for them. They're issuing their own digital currency today. JP Morgan is one of the best examples. Um, 
go to Quant's LinkedIn. I'll put this in the description. Read the articles for yourself. See what you think. Make up your own mind. Me likes it. Um, asset portability. This is obviously something they created themselves. Um, someone from the future of finance, tech quant. I'm sorry, guys. I, I did not prepare it as well. I, I was looking for the ECB thing. Key management, uh, one of them. Yeah, they keep they posting can... to their LinkedIn, right? Uh, <laughs> sorry? They keep posting to their LinkedIn. Yeah, but it, it, and... it's only it's only stuff they're they're involved in, right? Yeah, or, or relevant posts. Yeah. But then they're probably involved in the technology, so Yeah. Um <clears throat> yeah, anyway, I, uh I, I'm not sure where, where I put that, but that uh it's in the description at least. I think mm -hmm. the, the, the yeah. key takeaway here is is that the digital euro project is entering this new stage starting well tomorrow or yesterday, depending on yeah, yesterday mm -hmm. for you listeners, tomorrow for us. Um yeah, there will be another two year stage, right? So they're uh, they were actually propping up and yeah. It's going yeah. well. And knowing European politics and Eurozone politics, it will eventually be so well prepared that it's gonna be a formality. That's my uh yeah. my prediction. Yeah. But it's good. Yeah, like and we'll we'll see how it uh, advances. Uh, they'll, they'll be holding off right the decision for as long as possible until it is ironclad in closed chambers and yeah. and, and then and then they come up with, with something thought out well thought out and um and acceptable to people um let's um yeah let, let me let me look something up which is also interesting it's about the privacy it's a little bit of uh how do you say that Playing the same drum again, whatever. Um, Eating the uh, same drum again, like yeah. I, talk about cash? I, I I need to look it up on Axelan, Selena. Just this, the uh, she she posted something. Um, let me pull that up right here, and then we'll move it to price. That's okay. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, so da, 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 screen number two. This is the one. Yeah, so um, Quant had a booth, ladies and gentlemen. They had a booth today, and, and we'll get to where they were later on. But what you see here is uh, time for the industry to lead. I'm going to put my face real close to the camera because I can't zoom in here. Um, I, can't, I can't read this now. I just read this on my phone. If you're on your phone, go to the, the booth picture of Sulana Justice, S U E. L E N E and then J U I S T U S. Um, and you can zoom in on the picture on the screen, and then you can see a quote from the talk they had today um, about privacy for the CBDC stuff, um, how people think about that. That we're on stage. Oh. Um, and, and what do we see when we zoom in? I, I cannot zoom in, dude. I told you when mm -hmm. I zoom in, I only zoom oh, in. Oh, 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 okay, apps. okay. Yeah, it's really annoying. <laughs> Does, that's doesn't work that's interesting. Reason. Yeah, it does work on my phone. I mean, I, I can look it up, but it'll probably take time. What if I can? Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> I can kind of zoom in on my screen. You can bring it up if you want. Oh, fucking. That I is so annoying, X, if sharing. you can see this fix this shit that when I type in someone's name and I see the person's name, there's a little delay, like for a second and I tick with my finger faster and then it changes. And then I click on some stupid ad or other retarded stuff. You want me to see that? I don't want to see. Could so. you just stop screen sharing? Um. Mm, yes. I, I got it here on, on my uh, phone now. You want me to read this or? No, as in I can share my screen. Mm. Oh. Yeah, but so. your resolution is totally fucked up. Uh, oh, can, can, I read, can I read? Can, can I read? Yes, I can read. Lovely. So the Bank of England is clear. Quote, neither the bank nor the government would program a digital pound 
or restrict how it was spent as per the fintech st strategy group. And then uh, there's one to the right and it reads programmable payments. Programmability is a core differentiator for the digital pound and perhaps ultimately for UK sovereign currency. It is essential to the monetization of a UK CBDC. Project Rosalind has demonstrated a range of programmability use cases which Quant has provided the underlying technology. Dot, dot, dot will be remit of forward thinking commercial banks. The bank itself will not program the digital pound. The industry must lead on programmability. Um, I thought that was uh, juicy to add. Um, maybe you find it not to be so. And that is then your loss. I think it is really important for a lot of people. What do you think about it, Tim? That's yeah, interesting that they say that the industry is in the lead here, not the central bank. <laughs> no, the, 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 the central bank will not be coding it. Oh, right? no. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, okay. It's yeah. still by the design of the central bank. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and obviously there will be laws and legislation and shit, but industry will be... Uh, we'll be creating. I'm not really sure what kind of extra layer of reliability that adds, but I feel it, like it is. Yeah, I feel like we were really reliving the discussion of last week in Dutch. Yes, we literally yes. touched upon the same point that like the the central bank uh, isn't going to code it by itself. It's going to be the private companies which will do. Yeah, it. yeah. And last week we also said that that's a major, major shift in thinking a procedure compared to what happened 60 years ago, right? Because 60 years ago, and we were talking the uh, the infamous uh, what was the thing again? Bretton Woods. Yeah. That that was just old cigar smoke and fat people um making decisions for the rest of the world and how they get better off probably. And and now everybody is involved, right? Everybody has a computer and or a phone, and everybody can read along, and everybody's involved in the process. And that is scary for all parties, right? I mean, it's scary for the people that are there. Um, I mean, we we saw that with, with referendums around the euro and shit. Um, <clears throat> people don't know anything, but people still vote. Uh, they still have an opinion, even though they are not intimately um, acquainted with what is going on. And, and that is also scary for the banks because they have to be transparent. And they, the longer this trend continues, the harder it will become, right? For for companies, businesses, banks, governments to to screw people over. Um, and I'm, I'm like the opposite of a lot of people. I, I think all the developments that we have right now are are really positive. I think everything is becoming more transparent and, and exploitation of, of people will, will become, well, less i mean that's how it feels to me at least uh, let, let's not go there by the way I, I did it again oops i did it again <laughs> so yeah um anyway what's up with price tim <laughs> yeah uh last week we were we were fully irish fully in the green uh this week it's uh i it's a bit red again like we're going sideways yeah the theories yeah. have shifted uh yeah, what the, the seven, seven, seven what eight BT. Costs, I mean, uh, VT still at 3% on the seven yeah. day. Um, for what it is worth, Lord, it's not too it? terrible. Yeah, uh, looking at two weeks, BTC was at 27k, BTC is still comfortably at 33k now. Euro, excuse me, euros. So that's a six k gain. Um, Volume has subsided, right? Volume was for peak Bitcoin, uh, like 50 billion. And right now it's back to 10, which is a quite substantial haircut, if you ask me. It's a 40 um, billion cut. That's 80%. Yeah. So this was the, oh, the ETF is going to save the world and it's going to start the boom market. Um, well, I'd be laughing my fucking balls off is this if this was all that the ETF did. I'm not sure if the ETF is even approved or if it's actually a thing now, because this is kind of like the same burp we saw when uh, Europe listed a Bitcoin ETF. 
and Tim and I, maybe we're having this one right, right? Because we're like, yeah, no, the Bitcoin ETF ain't going to do shit. And then people were, yeah, just going to start the bull run. Um, maybe we'll have to see. I mean, I, I think love being personally, wrong. a bull run doesn't start over one variable. But Tim, right? but Tim, it's an ETF. Yeah, true. Um, now but institutions think... can buy Bitcoin that are all lined up trillions of dollars. I, I think there are multiple catalysts which will eventually <laughs> fuel the next bull run. So this is a major ingredient, I think, because well, it allows institutions to get involved. Um, and there will be many more variables uh, which will... Uh, there, there will be more ingredients, right? Yeah. And this is this is a main ingredient, but we need more ingredients for it to happen. Also, looking at the world economy, but eventually we will get back to a mania stage where we actually we, where we will actually uh, enter the next bull, the, bull market. That always happen. happens, but everybody this, I, I, was I, I, banging I, the fucking ETF oh, drum for, for months. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, I'm not sure this if this was will the be the main running where we spoke about right October 21st. That was the front running. I felt and. I, I hoped it would be a dud and that the line would go the opposite way because I fucking despise the hype around Bitcoin. By the way, I just heard today, Don told me, us, that Bitcoin, the white paper got published 15 years ago. Hooray! Thanks to Bitcoin, we are here. We need to be so grateful. That's why we all need to buy Bitcoin. Well, thanks to Bitcoin, we're here. I agree. Yes. Yeah, I, I, agree I mean, too, at the end of gonna... maybe, yeah. <laughs> Um, but still, like, we, we need catalysts, and this is one of them, and it's up to history to see how it will play out, yeah. but I think some, having some positive news and development going amazed. in the right direction. I am actually amazed that it sustains this 32k with the drop in volume. Yeah, but... The, Over the take, weekend, even? But Yeah, uh, but let's take another example, right? So, um, you have these halvings of Bitcoin. They they occur uh, around so many blocks. Currently, that's around four years. It will be different in the uh, future, obviously. Uh, um, and every time a halving happens, there, there's a lot of... Uh, well, I mean, everyone is really looking forward to it and then it happens it's kind of a non-event so it, it yeah. happens and nothing really happens but yeah after it, it 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 causes it has at least when we look at history it has caused bull runs so yeah they, See, the, what, the, what, the event what, what itself the is usually not what causes it it's what happens after and yeah, the problem is it now also correlates more and more with the stock market like crypto was its own thing. Yeah. But but the more everybody wants it to become mainstream, the more it loses the explosive volatility that everybody needs and craves and loves. I need my fix, bruh. Because institutions work with the, with the macro trend and they are reliant on monetary policy. They're reliant on inflation, deflation, whatever, everything else. Um, so crypto is more and more getting intertwined with all those things. And I'd be truly, truly fucking amazed if Bitcoin in, for the rest of his life makes another 10x. Sustainably, right? I'm, talk, I'm not talking about a peak. Um, I could be wrong. Love being wrong. I mean, there are things slower in this world than Bitcoin. Gold, for instance. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, We'll have to wait and see. Anyway, this is uh, not the, the cringe coin show. Uh, let's go to XRP. 56 cents. Let's go to Solana. Plus 23% on the seven day at 35 euros and 40 cents. Then we have Google Dogecoin. 3.1% on the seven days. Chainlink still up 13.4 on position 13 right now. 13? At 11, oh, whoa. At 11, at 11 euros. Congratulations to the Chainlink mob. I can't call you guys Marines. You guys are not fucking... Anyway, 10 euros and 69 cents. 
Um, looking at the 14 day, they had a decent climb. They went up from 7 euros. They're still down 75.3% of their all-time high. But yeah, um, glad they uh, finally have some exit liquidity because a lot of people are likely waiting for that. I'm just poking the hive here. Um, Matic plus 2.1% on the seven day. Yeah. Tim is poking the screen right now. Shiba Inu position 19. <laughs> Way down. It takes a while before we reach for ourselves. Oh, it's 30. We are in the Mariana trough. Yeah, we're at position 37. We're up 6.2% in the seven day. And um, yeah, ranging ish. Um, yep. It's it's not it's it's not terrible. It's not a terrible performance. Mm. It's just yeah. the usual yeah. disappointments. I feel. Um, yeah, yeah. So, however, if, if you think about it, like, yeah. we're kind of stabilizing around one hundred dollars now. Yeah, it's not uh, but... that, that, that's a great venture point. Yeah, we had 47 million at the peak and we're down to 17 million now. So we're all, we also dropped uh, a lot. Um, we yeah, are right. down at 73% from all time high. So it's a That's little a bit better than Link. Yeah. All time high was 361.77 euros. And uh, the historical low of quant was 18. Since 19, if you round it up, and that was five years ago, which is uh crazy when you think about it. It's a long time in, in, in crypto terms, yes. yes. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, there's still one thing left, and it's about quantum company itself again, yes, 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 yes. So, um, quant is taking the stage says their twitter taking to the stage now at uk finance dis to discuss the digital pound tony mclaughlin emerging payments and business development at society tom mutton cbdc director of the bank of england g verdian our founder and ceo rodney garat senior advisor at bis.org and Jana Pachai, board director and policy regulatory and legal lead, Digital Pound Foundation. And this session will be moderated by Paul Hollock, the chief payments officer of Banco Santander. You can see a picture where they're all sitting lined up and uh, having very nice little discussions. Um, here's a quote. We're about to embark on a design phase, says Martin. We've said a digital pound is needed. That's a long way from saying we're going to build it. We need consultation and a rigorous framework for decision making. Um, that is um, the same as we heard with the digital euro, right? We're not saying it's coming. We're just investing billions and billions to make sure it all goes well. But no decision has been made. Anyway, then we have... A bunch of these others, um, it, it is more of the same, right? What happens on these stages is they're just reporting stuff and they're dumbing it down significantly. It's very, very rare that from the things that I've seen um, that, 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 that there's actually, I mean, even at Cybos, right? They... They keep it so superficial, so simple. Also, probably scared for the maybe NDAs, right? You'd, it's still a competitive landscape. Even when we're talking of a, 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 a nation CBDC, right? Or a digital euro, which is huge. Um, yeah. Nobody wants to spill beans. Nobody wants to give away secret sauce. And that also gets me to think that there was a quote um, also shared in Council um, that secrecy is just the nature of, of business and how things work. And 
that everybody keep plays everything close to the vest, right? Everybody keeps everything to themselves because competition is everywhere. And, and even if we don't feel or see it, they do. And behind the scenes, there will be a lot of co-opetition. I had a discussion with somebody in the training group today. Um, if you have a really, really, really good bet and you're a professional trader and you invest billions, right? Not thousands of, of dollars, you, you will not be screaming from the rooftops what your super bet is. You, you're not going to do that. If you have inside knowledge for some reason, you're not going to be sharing that. And the same goes with companies using these types of technologies. Everything is under NDA, right? Because behind the scenes is where the actual conversation happened. And, and all the people here, they all know each other and, and they all speak. First name, base, first name basis, and they all know people that know people in other banks and other companies, and everybody's talking. I mean, there's no better work than a network, and, and, and that is what happens behind the scenes, and everybody is behind the scenes approaching one another. Yeah, yeah. They're not going on Twitter, yo, bro, hey, you want to try this new open thing, dude? It's going to be right. so fucking rad. I mean, it's, that's, just, that's just not happening, but, but that is our mindset, right? That is where that is our world. That is where we live. We need to shield this. We need to shield this token. Because if we don't shield it, then other retail not buying. And yeah. Um, and, and, and they were disappointed that Gilbert is not shilling hard enough that they're not talking about all their partners and that they're not bragging about their revenue, their private company. I mean, even, even public companies post that those data way after the fact and only thing the only the things that they absolutely positively have to report for uh their boards of directors and, uh, and investors and shit i mean if you don't have secrets in this role then then you'll you, you'll lose every match every contest i mean ju just to have some fun what do you think sergey would do if they knew every company where Gil that Gilbert is talking to, and 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 what they're paying Gilbert for their services, and knowing what those services entail before they are entirely implemented, what would you do if you knew? I mean, no. many of you guys are in these secret, smoky uh, back rooms on Telegram, thinking how you can screw over the next generation of investors. With 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 doo-doo coin, right? Or or whatever. How you can pump and dump a project. This is exactly this is exactly what what they're doing in a way, right? They are all playing it close to the vest behind the scenes. They're scheming, they're planning to sell their product and, and stuff as efficient as possible to make as much money and to get as much market penetration as possible. You're not going into the Quanfi Lounge saying, oh, man, I'm going to pump up this Quant token and try and dump it. No, of course not. Because then, then it doesn't work because everybody no. knows. Uh, but, it's, it's, but it also results whenever they, they communicate to the outside world that it is very repetitive. Yeah. Uh, very, oh, yeah. That's where it's I started. Almost like the, it's, <laughs> it's almost like the Quanfi show. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, like it's, or it's back a to our box. We only or... have six different records. Yeah, yeah. No, it, uh, no. We were talking before the show. We were talking about like my preparations, and um, I, I see these tweets on X, and then it's nice, right? So I see all those tweets from Quant, and it's they all they, they, they tweet a lot of stuff. But then when I engage with those tweets. You don't really say that much. It's just quotes from people on the stage. And those quotes don't necessarily say have a lot of content in them. So pick this one, for example. Yeah. Okay. Why did the core ledger for Project Rosalind only include central bank money? Why not include commercial bank money too? And let that be the catalyst for innovative use cases, asks Cites McLaughlin. Then I expect an answer. Is there an okay. answer in the other? I, I mean, I expect someone to answer this. The grand vision is you have not only tokenized money, 
but also tokenized assets, says Grant. Quant about traceability. No, I think this is just a loose end thing. Um, yeah, okay, but like it, it, it's very basic, and uh, the problem is that, that barely anyone understands what's going on here. And then with these kind of events, we've we've been saying this because we've been tracking these events for a while. Yeah, yeah, uh, and they what don't really go in probably, that. What a lot of people probably don't know is that all these questions have been established well in advance, right? There, there's no surprises necessarily. No, so because they can <laughs> they can majorly screw up. Uh, we've yeah. seen that in the past where they, they actually sat a little bit too much. Yeah, giving us even room. on talk shows, right? If celebrities go on talk shows, everything is scripted in advance to a degree. <clears throat> I mean, there's some spontaneous sp spontaneity. There are some spontaneous things. <clears throat> yeah. But it's Definitely. rare. It's rare because you would don't want to leave anything to um to chance. I mean, um society, interesting. Um, that that they're there, right? Society is also a really big bank, just like like J.P. Morgan. Um, no, I'm not going there. Um, yeah, but the, the, this event is going on. Font is there. Uh, yes, yes. Just know that it's going on. World is comfy. It 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 was going on. It's done already. I think this was a one day thing. Okay, nice. Yeah, uh, they're going back to the fraud and. I'll just follow the link in the description. Do us a favor. Let yeah. us know what you found. And then we have the latest thing. Beat you to it. Quant is part of a new association. <clears throat> We're proud to announce okay. that we have joined the UK's preeminent financial services association. And we'll be speaking at UK F Tweets flagship event later this month. The Digital Innovation Summit is taking place on October 31st. It was today. Uh, it brings together speakers, blah, 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 blah. Our CEO will speak, blah, 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 blah. So they're part of a new association. And I think if you go to their website and you go to associations, um, you can see all these things. And I think I have... Took you through this a couple of episodes back on my own. So uh, you can look this up in the description or you can go to the link video over there. I always forget if it's the top right or the top left corner because I am mirroring my my view. So it's it, it's in it's in your top right, right? So for me that's there, I think. Anyway. That's a proper quant for show ending, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Okay, we've been talking for a while. Uh, yeah, I think we should round it up. Um, yes. Has there yes. been a lot of news past two weeks? Definitely. Um, I'm actually still surprised that even in this landscape where it doesn't necessarily seem that a lot is happening, we, we continue to have the new functionalities uh, new things. And it's just like we're watching this glacier yeah, and it's insane. Week on week, it doesn't seem like there's any progress. Um, but now we have a little bit more times between episodes. You actually see it. Yeah, happening. A little it's bit better. better. It's better. But bi-weekly, fortnightly, is 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 better for us. Um, I also urge you guys. I cannot urge you guys enough. If you're really interested in this stuff. Go read up on Council because they go yeah. a lot, 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 lot deeper, and there are so many more links that I that I don't even dare talk about here um, because it is it it is just too much. Like Kramer, yeah. The, the, I mean, if you really want want to, there there is so much material to read up on. And well, for myself, I've pretty much made my financial decisions already. Um, yeah. I'm pretty. Well, confidence in what I, the decision I'm making. Um, but I mean, in case you're not, you just all uh, want to further your knowledge. Just, just go into those groups, do the deep dive. It's definitely worth it. And um, also, when you're just like feeling that you've lost oversight, go back into it um, because we have a lot of noise left and right for many reasons, um, but 
try to understand the essence of what it's all about and then it will really calm you down um so do that and then there was something else i wanted to say oh yeah also don't get maybe a kind of final closing note like we're seeing green in green markets uh don't lure yourself into or maybe you should but be careful please with with going into other coins other gambles other uh <laughs> Potential coins. I, I've seen I've seen some names once again dropping on, on Telegram now. Uh and I'm not saying those are bad picks. I'm not gonna name any cryptos. I don't wanna open Pandora's box, but um be careful with what you're doing, uh especially in times of green. You should really be delving into them when everything is red, everyone has lost hope, then you can make a, a ton mm-hmm. of money on those kind of investments. So be careful. That's the yeah. only thing I'm saying here. The research you did in a bear market is a lot better than the research you're doing in a bull market. A lot more reliable. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, we, we touched on this in the Dutch episode last week, but I wanted to yeah. give it as a final closing thought um, because I see a lot of people talking about other cryptos once again. And, well, it's their, it's their right and they shoot. Uh, I'm just going to swing but- this real quick. Yeah, but be very careful about swing, swinging, leaving Q&T, uh, because it could... I'm not saying it will happen, because we, we're, we're still in a yeah. uh, market which is not that interesting at the moment, but it could, out of nowhere, uh, go in a certain direction, and, and you don't want to have your Q&T out at that time. I, I read some... And on that bombshell, yeah, no, there, there was this, there was this oh. message I saw today that someone lost like 100 Q and T doing that. Yes, and yes, yeah, I'm a went to name a coin and the coin yes. had a smart contract exploit, and yeah. because like 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 a thousand people lost like uh, we bail money, they yeah obviously announced, and then the rest of the people just dumped their shit, and yeah, well that's uh what yeah I wrote that this morning i was like okay that's 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 a ton of money now it's 10k but you can imagine at our all-time high that's already 36k and you don't even want to think about the amount of money you've lost at one 1k uh, then history will lost. repeat and it will repeat that people make the same mistakes eventually Take you care of yourself do. yeah and each other stay comfy we'll see like you this video two weeks. oh yeah like subscribe share all those good things and um we'll see you in two weeks girls Comrades. Cheers. Cheers.